Good evening everybody that may be on the stream. And we're live. <coughs> so I hope everybody today has been having an excellent day, enjoying themselves and everything else that comes with uh, being out on a lovely day like today has been in the UK. A bit windy and a bit cool but otherwise nice bright sunshine. So we're going to continue with this pussy cat, which is not the, not this pussy cat, <coughs> who is the uh, the uh, the model for which is just sat to the other side of the camera. You may decide to make uh, an appearance later this uh, afternoon <coughs> or this evening, rather. But we shall see. Excuse me a little. I've just had my tea, so I need to just clear my throat. Alright, that should be better. Hopefully I will survive the evening. Right. I was darkening down this far. I shall continue doing that this evening before I move on to another area. This particular area of the wood looks like it's not going to take too much heat tonight. I'm not getting I'm not getting a great deal of colour out of it, so you'll see me. I'm now moving the tool quite slowly. Heat um, <coughs> heat applied can either come from having a hot tool or from a cooler tool. Move slow, more slowly. So at the moment, I'm having to use the slow method. Probably because I don't really want to get it too hot because otherwise I'll get dark blobs which I don't want. So if there's anybody new on the stream, <coughs> what you're looking at here is pyrography, which is art or images created with heat <coughs> excuse me and um, I'm using an electrically heated tool here to do this it operates from about one and somewhere between one and a half and three volts most tools do operate in that range they each have their own specific voltage but it uh, doesn't really matter they're, they're just low voltage um, and if you know anything about electronics, to get the heat, they employ high current. <coughs> so this particular controller that I'm using here generates anything up to about 10 amps. So the tool, well, the effective heat at the end is somewhere between 0 and about 25, 30 watts of power. So not specifically powerful compared say to soldering irons and things like that but still that hot that heat is all concentrated in the tip <coughs> I'm doing this on um, birch plywood birch because it's quite a white wood and the lighter the wood <coughs> the better in terms of getting more range of shades that that's available to you when you're doing this. The darker wood um, is somewhat compressed. You can't go any darker than carbonized wood, which is close to being black. So if you were to take a, a black wood like ebony, for example, you've got next to no um, contrast between unheat, unheated wood and carbonized wood. So you basically only get one shade. The more the lighter the wood that you use the more range you have to apply different shades. And here you can see at least two or three just in this uh, this piece here. 
unshaded, lightly shaded, medium shaded, heavy shaded and as dark as I can get it shaded. <coughs> I have come across recently some plywood from Poplar, made out of Poplar. It's a very high grade plywood. Actually the best grade of plywood you can actually get. And I'm looking forward to trying a piece on that because that, that wood is actually even lighter than this uh, birch plywood is. Although you may have heard of pyrography, it often gets called wood burning. But generally speaking, people who are creating art in this form that I'm doing here are not actually burning the wood at all. What we're really doing is cooking the sap which is in, in the wood fibres. Uh, very much like maple syrup if, if you ever uh, are familiar with uh, creating that and that's what's actually causing the brown colouring and often it's laying actually on the surface of the wood itself like a paint or a varnish and indeed it quite often will actually make the wood surface look shiny uh, very much like a varnish would do there are artists which actually do burn wood literally they you know, use a blow torch or they'll use a heating tool until it carbonizes the wood uh, and you actually get black or well, as close to black as uh, as it gets um, but uh, that's not uh, that's not a technique which I prefer to use for myself it tends to be somewhat binary colors either it's there or it's not you, it's very well I'm not aware of it being possible to get shades of black when you carbonize wood you can use a naked flame, uh, like a blowtorch, to do this sort of thing, and you, you still can shade the wood there. It's it's all about how long you hold the heat in one place. But generally, something like a blowtorch being used would be working on really large pieces of wood, several feet, rather than something small like this. Well, I guess it might be possible to use a micro torch, but. I'm not sure I'd want to do that inside in an inside studio like here. So I've been already passed over this area of the pussycat once, uh, but the, the sh th this cat, as you can see from the reference image, is. Well, he looks black. He's actually a very dark brown, uh, which is an interesting colour. You can actually only see that when you compare him to a cat, which is black. But he's a very dark brown. And my first pass through here came out very light. Now, I'm quite happy with that because it means I can go over a second time and make it darker as I'm doing here. Whereas if I've got it too dark, it's not something I can easily undo. So I'm quite happy about it. So the way I make it darker is to do what I'm doing now, which is making two or three more passes over the same area. And that cooks more, that cooks the sap more, making it a darker colour, yeah, thus increasing the, the, you know, the level of shading. Now the other reason why this came out very light to start with is the the way I'm using this tool which is actually called a flat shader. It's not really designed for what I'm doing now but it does work very well and I'm uh, for cat fur or animal fur I'm actually creating a, a texture. By holding this at an angle it normally would be laid flat so the base of it is flat but holding it at an angle I'm using the right angled edge and when you apply heat to wood the wood itself has a tendency to shrink away after all you're drying the wood out 
if I'm extracting the sap from it I'm drying the wood out and it and when you do that it tends to shrink and what it does is it shrinks away in in like a V shaped groove but in doing so what's actually happening then is I'm only cooking sap on one side of that groove and therefore the other sap side is reflecting normal light and is therefore quite light so it looks very uh, very light does the shading and in actual fact if I it might not show up too well on camera but as, if I turn the piece around I can actually get a diff the shading changes it gets darker in some view uh, angles and lighter in others which is you know, as, as you're looking more at the dark side of the V groove it's looking darker and as you look more at the light side it looks lighter so what I'm doing now basically is going down the other side of the V groove I'm also creating more texture as I go along uh, because the wood continues to to shrink away from the tip very slightly it's not a massive uh, shrinkage uh, I'm not applying enough heat for that but it, it is enough to create these little grooves which is like the texture of fur uh, and indeed um, to some extent the imperfections that you're seeing in sort of a mottled marking actually improves the realism um, but as I go over and create more texture you're creating a layered like effect where uh, individual hairs cross other hairs etc so it's not uh, not perfectly linear uh, it's more organic and more natural which improves uh, the, uh, the representation of fur actually as a um, <coughs> it was actually a, uh, an inadvertent discovery to some extent this particular tool I'm using is one that I've I got to try so um, when I'm using pyrographic tools I, per I have a personal preference for using what's called fixed tip or welded tip tools and as an example of one this is another shader this is called a spoon shader but if you look at the difference here you can see the one that I've got here this one uh, the flat shader which is in my right hand I'm not quite sure what you're seeing that as but this one here has screws on the side and that and that's so that I can uh, uh, use a replaceable tip. You'll notice this one doesn't have those screws. The tip is actually um, well, it's silver soldered, I, I believe, uh, into the actual contact. So that that tip is not replaceable. Whereas this one is. The reason why I prefer the fixed tips is although this is, these are tight there's still a resistance between them and it's a resistance which causes heat this metal tip is actually a resistance metal it's uh, a nichrome alloy I believe which is uh, creates a reasonable level of resistance uh, pushing current through a resistance causes heat uh, something called Ohm's law if you're familiar with electronics um, but they, there is still a resistance between uh, the these posts uh, and this wire through the screw so I'm losing some heat in here uh, which doesn't go to the tip which means I have to turn the tool up mm, kind of neither here there there really you can turn the, the tool up but I also have you know if I decide to press down I'm kind of a little bit wary of this thing springing out and one or two other things like that so <coughs> I'm just uh, a little bit um, you know, have a, a, a preference for the fixed tips. The other reason why is if I want to change this tip, I've got to undo. Well, I've kind of got to turn it off. It'll cool down in you know ten or twenty seconds, or enough to to be comfortable with. And I then have to unscrew it, get another tip out, put it in. Whereas if I want to change to this pen, I just unplug at the back, just pull that card out, plug this one in, I'm ready to go. This thing will sit quite happily on the desk without burning anything it's just a personal preference um, the fixed tip pens are more expensive because you're getting the whole pen body as well as the tip so 
but because I didn't know whether I'd have a use for this particular tip when I got it, uh, that's that's why I got it as a replaceable tip. It allowed me to experiment relatively cheaply. And I say relatively because this tip is about four pounds UK, which would be about six dollars, something like that. And uh, uh, what I will do at some point in the future is order a fixed version of this because I do like it. But what I, I found almost by accident was um, it created this nice v-groove texture if I didn't quite hold it straight uh, and that it prompted me to try it for fur and then and that's this particular uh, piece that's the top here which is was done a few a couple of weeks or so ago uh, was done using this technique and uh, I was I'm really pleased by it and so I kind of learned at the time a new technique and a new use for this particular tool normally I'd use them um, or normally before that what I'd have done is use a knife type tool so it would like, be like this but it would have basically a knife blade on the end now that that actually creates a finer it's a cut more than a, a groove and it doesn't actually look as good even though I would not would previously have used that for for fur so sometimes these things just uh, happen the happy accident and now it's uh, changed how I do fur Oops, sorry about that baby tears good evening sorry I'm uh, uh, rambling away I'm concentrating on what I'm doing I didn't see you drop into chat how are you this evening <laughs> That emoticon does look kind of weird. It's probably because of the white teeth. I'm trying to think what it reminds me of, but there's something about it which is a little bit weird. But hi. I, don't, I was about to say, I don't think I've seen you around for a few days. How are you doing? Now, despite the fact it's relatively cool in the UK, it's quite warm in the studio. I now need to keep my my glasses from steaming up. I'm going to have to get a headband, I think, like tennis players wear. I should stop my glasses from steaming up. Is there? Um, okay. Weird buzzing off my mic. It could be that I've got it turned up, otherwise OBS for some reason is it has a very low volume. Let me just try fiddling with these terminals. Hopefully that didn't blast anybody with noise. And I'll just uh, switch this a couple of times. So you might get a few pops. Okay, you might. It's about all I can do, other than perhaps turning down the gain. Uh, okay. Uh, flat out work, yeah. There's a lot of that going around at the moment, I think. Uh, good now. Okay, that's. Uh, must be just a, a dirty connection then. I'm kind of lucky. It's been a, a quiet week for me at work. I haven't... Uh, I've had a busy but relaxed time, if that makes sense. Uh, what little birdie is this? Perhaps this little birdie should have told me about it as well. <laughs> and I, I wonder where such a little birdie would deliver things. I mean, I can't imagine who on earth would want to uh, to have one of these pieces. <sighs> this one, well, of course, this one is a personal piece. It's junior. He's one of our cats. Uh, this one is 
kind of a commission from the point of view where I was asked specifically to do it um, by my wife <laughs> uh, to go with this one because this is Felix who is also one of our cats um, Felix has been attempting to come on the stream for the past couple of nights but never actually made it buzzing is b I wonder let's see has that changed um, could be it might be because this is uh, okay let me let me move that cable down there and see how that is um, not particularly well I suppose I'm moving a little bit closer to the webcam but that should not be picking anything up in the audible range but what it might be is this is an AC driven tool not DC so if you're hearing a buzzing I'm suspecting it may be at 50 Hertz which is what this tool is running at so all I can do is move things to one side um, I tell you what you t uh, I'll wait the 15 or so seconds and we'll just see if it's it's getting worse now let me put that up tell you what I'll put that over there and turn that off now let's see if it's still getting worse. I'm keeping roughly the same position in respect to everything else. All I've done is turn my um, pyro machine off. If I keep reasonably quiet, you'll hear if it's there. Not. Uh, I don't have any ferrite cords around, so it's going going down yeah I, I think it must be pick up from from there I'm boosting the mic as well so because for some reason OBS does not it just reads the mic at a completely different volume um, I do not uh, okay what I'm going to do is try and get my microphone cord then completely away from the pyro so if I put this behind me good job it's got a long springy cord okay yeah so I've put that right behind me so my body should act as a reasonable shield so let's see how this goes turn the pyro back on um, so you let me know I'll also try and keep the mic away from it I'll have to try and sit back a little bit um, audio problems, uh, analog audio problems, it uh, is a fun time if it uh, continues I'll have to see about getting a little bit more technical a solution if it comes back I can't do anything about the pyro but yeah it's a pyro machine oh dear must be being picked, must be yeah must be being picked up via me I must be acting as an aerial what else can I do? Oh, I'm not believe. Uh, no way am I thinking you're lying. It it doesn't surprise me in the uh, the slightest. Baby tears it does not surprise me in the, in the slightest. Um, I, I am a licensed radio amateur. I am used to odd things, uh, picking up home and stuff like that. I'm just trying to think of the best way in which I can do anything about it. Is it too objectionable, or is it just something that's in the the background? I, I'll, we'll have to listen to the VOD back and see. But I, I'm not, I don't really want to do that in the middle of a stream. Um, I don't have anything at all around. Um, well. Mm, I suppose. Okay. Um, I can try one thing, and that is just to drop the uh, the volume, the gain of the mic. Uh, wrong place. So if I go into OBS settings, audio, let me drop this down to two. Now, that's probably dropped the volume of my mic. Um, so is that now too quiet uh, uncomfortably quiet uh, it should have dropped the volume of the hum as well if you were hearing it 
and that is if it is indeed coming through the microphone. Uh, I shall have to I shall have to listen back to the VOD and see. Do some testing after after the stream is finished. Now yeah, then, okay. So I shall carry on with Felix for the moment. Uh, yeah, is it too quiet? Was it was it better where it was? Um, I was. That's why I pushed it up to to the level it was uh, before. Um, but if if I need to drop it just for this, then maybe that's uh, not too bad. I'll just have to remember to talk more loudly. Unfortunately, I have a tendency, especially when I'm concentrating or talking for a long time. Oh, about oh, sorry, I apologise. Drop it another twenty-five percent. Well, I can drop it back to base level. When I listen, when I first did this, and I listened to my own uh, recordings back, it seemed to be really quiet, which is why I was uh, trying to boost the volume. But that's well. I suppose I can go lower than that. But how's that then, baby tears? I shall let you uh, have time to respond. Okay. Well, we'll shall try that, and we'll see how the see how the hum has gone. That should have dropped it down quite a bit as well. Right. Um, however, if you are interested in yeah. I, I, did catch the reference as to where it should go, etc. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, you can drop me a PM if you're interested in something. I don't mind selling pieces, but it won't be these two. So if you've got a, a particular um, thing you might like to see, um, then let me know. Uh, okay, so I will continue on with this pussycat so gotta get the angles right the, the fur just changes as we get towards the front of the face the fur angles all change as they come around the face so just gotta remember to keep curves curves in this area here um, and the position of the curve changes as we come around here so it's it's a little bit of an awkward thing. I've got to keep remembering to change the angle. If I don't, then the fur looks to going in the wrong direction. And you, you see a flat spot on the face, which doesn't look right. But this is uh, this one is Felix. He's a dark brown pussy cat that everybody thinks he's black, including me. But I know he's actually brown. And he's got the archetypal black and white pussy cat name of Felix or at least in the uh, English speaking world I think Felix seems to be uh, synonymous with black and white cats I think it probably comes back comes from the old Felix cartoons he's a rescue pussy cat he came from a shelter and he's quite a an oldish sort of pussy cat these days I don't actually remember how old he is, but I think he's in excess of 10 and he still bounces around the place like a kitten sometimes. Oh yes, but I've, I agree, yes, and I mean that's that's probably where most people know it from, but of course they used a black and white cat on the advert as, as a cartoon cat and I think... Um, I can't remember which which of the stu American studios used to do Felix the Cat. He was a uh, Felix the Cat, the wonderful, wonderful cat. You laugh so hard, your sides will split, your heart will go pit apart. I can even remember the uh, the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that with ours sometimes. He certainly wants to let you know if uh, if he thinks he should have been fed, because he, he's very good at telling everybody that you know pussy cats never get fed. They they don't have any food, and nobody's ever given him any. And you know it would be really nice if if somebody thought you know once in a lifetime to give him something to eat. Ah oh dear. But he also has a habit of. 
He has a habit of wanting to sit right in the middle of the bedside table. Uh, and he doesn't like anything around him when he does that, so he just spreads out and pushes everything off and you can't find. Uh, whiskers, wasn't it? Um, no, Whiskers, uh, f there is a cat food called Felix. Cat food, Whiskers is, is a different one. They tend to use a uh, grey tortoise shell type forgot what they call it but uh, shades of grey it's it's a grey tortoise shell I think is brown and white but um, it's it, it's like grey speckled does is whiskers generally the one that they use on on their adverts used to, um, there used to be an advert in the UK for a cat food called Arthur's which is um, a white cat and one of the things that the the cat did uh, in the advert was it would actually sit by a can of open cat food and dip his paw in and eat it. Um, we used to have a uh, a young cat which uh, was born in the house here uh, from one of our other cats and I forgot what uh, we called the cat Morala which is an English an English an English sized anglicized version of Mehrala, which is Greek for with milk. Her being a white cat and always wanting her mother's milk. And she used to sit, when, when she was old enough to eat cat food, um, if you put a tin of cat food down, she'd start dipping a paw in and eating it. <laughs> so, um, Arthur, I can remember um, for that. I was about to say, cats get often get used to sell lots of things, particularly cat food, but what else would you use to sell cat food but a cat? Oh dear. And, and of course the other thing, that cat litter, and, but what else would you use to sell a cat litter but a cat? Um, I don't, don't know if you remember seeing the, 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 uh, there were f like four Persian kittens, white kittens, looking for uh, one of them looking for the uh, cat litter and it you know the idea being that this cat litter stopped all smells so the kitten couldn't find it it's really cute oh Davito and Pixie I assume uh, uh, is that uh, is I, I, I said Dorito but it's you've written D O R R T Dorito so maybe I've pronounced it wrong Okay, I won't. <laughs> I guess you've got used to to that immediate response, have you there? Uh, Doritos. Okay. Like the chips do. Okay, now you spell it, well, you mean those triangular things? Come, you know. Um, okay, yeah. So I'm spelling it right. I'm reading it right. You're just... Uh, uh, spelling challenge this evening is it? <laughs> oh, I can't. Uh, I was about to say I can't really participate. Participate. Partake is the word I was looking for in uh, uh, you know slightly uh, fermented drinks this evening. At least not. Uh, not while I'm handling things like chisels and hot tools and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of stopped me drinking as well. I didn't drink a great deal anyway. Uh, you know, maybe sort of once a month I might have some sort of alcoholic drink, but it, streaming has now even stopped that. <laughs> this streaming lat's got a lot to answer for. Uh, I don't watch as many streams as I, uh, I used to do. I can't keep up on my YouTube videos that I used to watch. Ah uh, dear. <laughs> I, um, I, I drink so little actually these days baby tears that um, yeah, a pint of beer for example I would feel the effects and, and I'm exaggerating a little bit because I could quite easily use um, the power graphic machine. I might be a little bit more wary with this chisel because they're really sharp. This I'm holding it more like a pen which is kind of something you're so used to doing that 
um, it probably wouldn't be too bad but um, I'd be wary with the chisels but I just I just really I uh, don't drink I don't drink wine much anyway I don't I actually don't particularly like wine uh, red wine I don't really don't care for it's the the um, I keep wanting to say the word tartar but uh, the tannin the you know which you get in the red wine uh, I it, I find really tart and I don't I really don't like that at all so if I'm going to drink wine I'll drink white wine and I pref much prefer a sweet white wine rather than a dry yellow one and probably probably my favourite sort of wines are uh, pudding wines because they're really sweet I've a, I've more of a tendency to just drink fizzy water to be honest but I do like it I do like a beer of all you know whether we're talking American beers you know lagers or um, hop based beers you know bitter lag uh, bitter mild um, I actually like a cold Guinness to be honest yeah Carlsberg <laughs> oh, I don't go that way I, I actually go I actually get sleepy if I get uh, too much to drink but I don't um I don't go mad with uh, with drinking I get migraine headaches which I get for free so to speak so what um, you know I don't I don't like hangovers because why on earth would I want to give myself a migraine on purpose because that's kind of what they are you know a hangover is a bit like a mild migraine and why give myself something that I uh, uh, get for free anyway but uh, No, a nice. Uh, I I I do like Guinness and and the cold Guinness. I quite like. I, I, I was about to say I kind of like any cold drink really, but cold beers. So that's one reason why I tend to like the lagers because they're cold. I've even had Guinness over there in Ireland. Probably the same stuff <laughs> as in the UK, and probably coming from the same brewery in the UK. But <laughs> oh dear. So these um, these dreams of mine seem to go from all sorts of things. We've uh, oh, I forgot what we've just the last last night. I forgot what the discussion was. It was it ended up talking about computers and computer games. I think and. Oh dear, and uh, completely going away from art. You know, we we talked about pussy cats on the stream and all sorts of stuff. But if anybody's uh, anybody's watching, feel free to join in the chat. Um, yeah, if you'd like to talk about something else, then please go ahead and do so. Um, as long as it's uh, within Twitch terms and conditions, of course. If you're wondering what you're looking at, it's pyrography. The it's an art form which is about creating images with heat uh, although literally it translates to fire writing but uh, no no fire and I'm not writing um, You're right, I don't seem like the clubbing type, and I'm not the clubbing type. <laughs> um, there again, I am almost twice your age, baby tears, so... I, um, <laughs> I actually haven't watched Lost. I, I just have never managed to catch one of the streams. Oh, I did once catch the start of uh, her stream enough to say hello and then um, it was whilst I was at work and I got dragged into doing something else so uh, no it doesn't sound rude at all um, but um, I listen to music that I like the sound of um, doesn't matter what it is really um, so it doesn't uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's c 
kind of a bit weird though, baby tears. I am quite a shy person. You wouldn't know it, would you? Uh, I, but I used to work in sales as a shy person. I would walk into a room full of people and just start talking to anybody and everybody. Uh, which of course is what you need to do in uh, well in the sales thing that I was working in um, which is that very high value stuff so there's you know you're, you're, there's no room for somebody to be shy and retiring and sit, uh, you know, stand against a wall but I'm not particularly one for uh, for clubbing at all too shy you see and daft as it sounds well, it might sound daft uh, because I have, uh, well, I've been an amateur musician for a number of years. Um, that's weird. That's a power cable. That's a cable to another pen, which is off at the moment. Um, the microphone cable is behind me. This, there's only one other cable here which is the mouse cable ok I suppose that's possible let's move the mouse cables out of the way as much as I can took that out there move that over there as much as it will do there we go yeah I will do I will do but it's going to be a bit of a um, hold my pen up it starts and again the, you know, that's not a lot of I mean you know, obviously you can see the difference between the, the movement of the pen um, unless I'm acting as the aerial itself but unfortunately there's not a lot I can do about it other than go silent on stream that is weird ok let's have a look is this pen Oh, that looks okay. Uh, no, I haven't actually. I literally have just set everything. You know, it it sat here since last night, um, or or before uh, the last time I was, I was doing junior, and I've not changed anything at all. Uh, just just come in, plug plug the headset in because it's not normally plugged in, and just gone from there. Um, there's another connector on here. This may may create a a a, a ping, so just be careful if you've got headphones on. Okay, what's just unplugged and plugged in a connector again. Uh, let's have a look at this one down here. I'm even plugged into the same USB port because it's a USB based mic. Um, USB based mic. So that's the microphone, so excuse the pops. Okay. Uh, hmm. If it's really bad, I'll, I'll drop the stream and try and fix it. It's gone. completely okay if it comes back it's because I've moved it will have gone because I moved away from the pyro machine which I think is the source of the noise um, so let's just try something with that that's off and that's off and that's back on If you're doing pyrography for yourself, of course, you don't normally have to put contend with this sort of problem. If you're doing it on stream, then uh, yes, you may have to contend with this sort of problem. Um, uh, possibly, but it, um, you know, that, that's uh, the connector that I tried first seemed to be in OK. And the other connector that I, I tried uh, seemed to be in OK before I start, but you know these the the connectors are the sort of usual tiny headphone based connectors 
uh, like that sort of thing this isn't it but like that and you know just uh, from experience I know that generally those things do become somewhat noisy and once they get like that then microphones are notorious for picking up any sort of electrical noise going on and it's back here yeah. Yes, they we went away, I think, because I moved away from the pyro machine from these cables here. Um, let me unplug that one, although that shouldn't be doing anything. And I'll just get rid of that cable altogether. Took that out of the way. That shouldn't be picking anything up, but that might have an impact. <laughs> oh dear uh, I haven't laughed like that since last night um, for a completely different subject oh dear <laughs> how's, how's that for a coincidence though Oh dear, baby tears. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> well, just check whether it comes back. Because <laughs> it might just be, just coincidentally, you must have moved or something then when I went away. Or, oh dear. That's all right. You know, because it it was it was perfectly reasonable that it could have it could have happened that way. You know, I am I am fully f familiar with you know, mains pickup from microphones and stuff like that. It's uh, it it was not by any means um, things. Ah, oh, bubbles to monkey. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Uh, good luck for your stream as well. Are you doing your beats tonight? Um, if well, I'll I'll try and drop in on your stream after I finish as well, because you you carry on a little bit later than me normally so I shall try and uh, and try and drop in bubbles thank you for uh, for dropping in oh dear no don't worry about it baby dears it, it was it was a bit of fun anyway you know yep oh definitely I'll I'm not going to stop my stream early but I'll uh, I'll pop across as soon as uh, as soon as I stop bubbles so if anybody is uh, watching Bubbles the Monkey there is going to be streaming some bead art uh, this evening uh, which should prove well it's something that's very interesting to me and should prove interesting as well uh, I've got a kit on order and hopefully it will arrive sometime next week and I may get around to trying it in the weeks ahead oh dear I was um, yeah you may, you give me a good laugh baby tears if nothing else Yep, that's a good idea, um, and I'll take your word for it. I, don't, I didn't didn't actually know whether Bubbles was male or female, but it doesn't really matter. But other than getting the right pronoun, I guess. Yep, seems like that's a very good idea. Um, I already did it the other evening, so um, I don't need to do it this evening. I was uh, talking with who was on stream last night it was Free D Block, and he told me about. Um, social blade uh, you know which w w will show you twitch stats because twitch stats are interesting to say the least uh, and that's interesting as I do not understand how on earth I get the values but um, he, he gave me the link to, to social blade to, to my stats and, and I found it quite funny it was talking about you know followers you know I've got I don't know how many is 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 of about sixty four, sixty five followers I think, and uh, I scrolled down and it, it said you know um, other streamers, it's something like other streamers like you, and I was kind of expecting to see people like you know three D for example. I know he's got three hundred odd followers, streams a couple of hours a night like I do, and Bubbles has just gone live. If anybody is uh, wanting to. Um, pop in and check um, and uh, you know I was expecting that and, and I scrolled down and, and the the entries it was giving me for streamers like me you know the first one uh, 3.5 million viewers 
<laughs> uh, sorry, their uh, followers. Uh, the second one, 2.5 million. <laughs> I just cracked up for about five minutes as to how on earth uh, Social Blade had, you know, could could th have any concept that they were anything at all like me. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I, uh, I, I don't. Um, okay. I keep count of them because they're in front of me. I, I, I have. Um, okay, I keep count of them because it's interesting, not because I'm chasing them. Uh, baby tears. So, uh, my job at work involves quite a bit of statistics, which I find interesting. And so, you know, looking at, at things like that is is interesting to see how Twitch does it. What it's uh, you know the stats it presents, and I find it really. I mean, I find it really funny. For example, that on a daily basis, I get twenty video views, and it's always twenty video views. And it's kind of like, well, I know I only had you know three people, or you know, I might, uh, had forty the other night because Lost hosted me for a while, and it's kind. Of, but I had twenty video views. I think this lies, damn lies, and Twitch stats. And uh, I, so I'm not, uh, I'm not chasing him or anything like that, uh, baby tears. I understand that. I'm doing this because it's fun. It's fun talking to you guys out there. And uh, you know, um, if I get well, Twitch, Twitch is currently telling me I've got two viewers. That's me and you. <laughs> um, there may be more. I don't know because uh, the the uh, the feedback. Uh, window is really slow in that respect but uh, yeah yeah it, it, I'm sure it will it, yeah if it does it does um, it's interesting um, there's a uh, there's also beam which has just started up which seems to be a little bit more of a general broadcast and I've thought of not of, of switching because I quite actually like being on twitch it, you know, there's a lot of potential people there, but I have thought about maybe doing a simultaneous broadcast, simulcasting. Oh, now then, that's that's getting really posh, isn't it? Simulcasting. Uh, but if you've had too much to drink, maybe I ought to stay away from the long words. <laughs> yeah, I think it will grow. Um, I I started prepping for um, for uh, this just this afternoon because. Uh, I was thinking of doing a sort of a one-off stream maybe tomorrow. Well, I was thinking of doing it today, but I never got round to it. Um, tomorrow, in, in for that particular case, in the train simulator um, channel, and because uh, it, it's a train, and I know there's not a lot of people in there, but just sort of yeah doing something different I because I am quite good at drawing things like trains and planes and trucks and things like that so as opposed to things like World of Warcraft but um, so I was thinking of just doing sort of some one-offs and that was I was going to do a different art form for that I uh, one of the art forms I do is called punch craft it's a punch tool um, don't have one around do I? Um, but it's a very quick art form, relatively speaking, and so I could probably get a piece done in, in or you know, substantially done in in a couple of hours. So I was thinking of just going on to some of the um, slightly less less well known uh, channels, partly because then there's likely to be less of the. Um, What's the? How would you describe some of the followers of people like uh, things like World of Warcraft? Um, extremely focused. Mm, you know what I mean, anyway. Um, yeah, they. I, I kind of have, but I kind of haven't. I have no particular objection to doing it, but anime, for example, I don't watch anime. I'm not greatly interested in watching it. So what I'd be doing is just copying, copying, you know, the the 
copying using a lot of reference images uh, off the internet you know so um, <laughs> uh, yeah and does express their uh, that frustration in some very weird ways um yeah um i mean some of the some of the game characters if you take uh, uh zelda for example i've played the game so you know you've got the um, the princess and Link and, and things like that. Yeah, well, it's an interesting discussion. Um, I know I know, Free has had uh, some uh, some challenge uh, some some interesting challenges on stream with people saying he's copying and things like that. And uh, my my answer to that is yeah, I copy. All artists, co every single artist copies. They copy every single picture or piece that they do uh, because they're either copying from reference images and they're copying bits from lots of images or they're copying from the image that they see in their brain. So every single artist copies. Don't have a problem with that. And uh, it's things, you know, I mean, things like this, for example. I I do have a drawing of this particular train and you may recall I was doing it as a practice piece for pyrography when I first came on first started streaming and this is actually the reference image uh, that I was I was or from the reference image because this is this has been turned into a line art but what I intend to, what I'm using that for is um a transfer so what I'll actually do is transfer that to the material. It's kind of like I could draw it, but what's the point? <laughs> you know, the 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 art form that I am intending to do is not the drawing. It's the it's the the colouring in, for want of a better word. The art definitely. It's nice to have people in, and to some extent, I guess I'm kind of an educator. You've probably gathered that I'm, I'm sort of doing a bit of both. You know, I'm tending to talk a lot more to you guys now because you're coming back regularly, and we can have a, a, a you know, interesting discussions and things like that. But uh, uh, I am also I am also an educator. I I I watch. I have watched a lot of streams. I watch a lot of things on YouTube, and. If the, if if there isn't a lot of if there isn't people in the stream like on stream if there isn't people in the stream so the the streamers just going by themselves or if we're talking about YouTube where it's pre-recorded a lot of people will do things which are silent and I can't I well it, effectively I never watch a silent stream or a silent video I just I get bored really quickly or where where they are talking you'll somebody will say well you do it this way this is how you do it as though there is absolutely no other way of doing it and the thing I find well apart from the arrogance of that really but the thing I find about that is you know somebody may have a well let's just go really silly and somebody's got a py pyrographic tool that looks like this and they're saying this is how you do it well I've got one that looks like that do I do the same thing? Uh, don't know. I can't learn that from the fellow that says this is the way you do it because he's, you know, he's talking about something completely different. So I, I love the streams uh, or the YouTube videos where somebody's explaining why they're doing something, and that's something I want it to replicate if I'm answering questions or just generally talking, uh, where I'm, you know. It's, it's talking about what I'm doing but uh, uh, other than that you know once once you get you know like yourself and we're having a conversation then you know that's streamers that are doing that are the ones that I like to watch because there's the personality in there you know there's, there's that interaction even if I'm not taking part in it um, it's pyro art is rare there's three that I know of on Twitch Cannon Bear uh, does it. He does a different style of pyro though. Um, he uses um, a soldering iron based like tool 
and his tends to be a more cartoon style nothing wrong with it it's just a different style and there is a, another guy that I've not actually seen do pyro but I know he does because I've seen the the instrument on his his desk while he's been doing something else I can't actually recall his name but yeah it's uh, it is quite rare and I think that's nice because the one thing I well as in creative at the moment there's a lot of people that stream um, electronic painting so you know they're, they're doing electronic art which is again there's nothing wrong with that I do it myself I've, the the, uh, the screen is next to me here and I've got the you know, <laughs> got the pens to go with it um, but I, I love watching physical art um, somebody actually doing something like this uh, and so you know it's it's nice to give I sound pompous now don't I it's nice to give people the choice on Twitch to see something different and see some physical art and there's only relatively few of them I mean, we've got some sculptors on there some people doing chain mail uh, and I and you got you know Danish who's doing the uh, the leather work and I find it really fascinating but uh, should I have been an art teacher it's interesting because well no I've never considered it really to be honest at all I'm complete whatever I do is completely self-taught when I was at infant school I got terrified of art for some reason and, and I can I can remember what it was but not why the in and you know in the drawing art do things class I can remember having to do a tin of fruit and for some reason I was trying to do a cutaway of a tin of fruit don't ask me why but this is just what I remember and I can remember being completely terrified of it and I don't know why but it's it's not of a tin of fruit it was of that art piece and never really kind of liked art as such since then um, I was good at it in secondary school I could have easily done an O level or an A level but I didn't um, about then I was more interested in technology computers so I intended if I didn't get the job that I actually went for in the sixth form I would have been gone to university and done a um, programming which at the time was a really 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 well paid job because uh, there weren't that many around but uh, I've never considered it I sort of been interested uh, what picked up my interest again was airbrushing I tried it when I was about f 14 15 and I failed because I got completely the wrong tool to do it with and I, luckily I recognized that and so it just got put away but I never tried it again until um, about five years ago when I built a PC and I wanted my own unique case so I said you know what I'm going to try this airbrushing lark and went out and got the bits and I've been doing that ever since oh don't worry <laughs> that is the problem with me sometimes I get carried away talking I'll either get carried away doing something and not look up at the screen or I'll get carried away and uh, uh, not look down at the piece uh, if I do it right I can do both at the same time I don't require a great deal of um, concentration it's not it's not like when I'm doing the carving where I need to you know at times say hang on a minute I've got to concentrate just where this sharp object is going this at least isn't too bad to uh, to do both at the same time you know so I might be a man but I'm practicing doing two things at the same time so don't worry about it uh, at least having things to discuss and talk about is better than me going mm, what do I say now and then I go over the same things that you've heard probably about 50 times baby tears you know um, this is pyrography and this is what I'm using <laughs> Uh, but of course if there's anybody in stream who hasn't heard that feel free to say hello and I'll quite happily tell you what I'm doing or answer questions uh, and go over all the uh, uh, all the t 
techniques and the fancy uh, descriptions about pyrography and the tools and and everything like that but bearing in mind that I'm not a you know, as free says free free's a professional but he's not a he's not an expert um, I'm neither <laughs> this is not my job and um, I kind of wish it was but I don't think people would pay me enough but uh, I'm learning all the time and you guys who are watching me on stream are watching me learn but I am rather pleased with streaming because it's making me do this I've done more Art Baby Tears in the past three weeks than I've, than I've done uh, in the past year uh, ok uh, Sisto, I, I'm assuming it's pronounced Sisto13. Is this wood burning? Uh, as Baby Tears says, yes, it is, but no, it's not. <laughs> it's it's generally called wood burning, and but it's we're not actually burning wood. Um, the what the technicality is, uh, of it is that what we're actually doing is cooking the sap. So I, I'm guessing if you've not seen a tool like this before, um, uh, Sister 13, um, this is, I'm guessing you use one that looks like a soldering iron, so it's quite a big chunky handle uh, with, a, with a thick, uh, no I don't have it out, with a sort of a thick metal rod with, a, with, with a, maybe a point or something on the end that you screw in. Um, which is just a different type of pyrographic tool. Um, actually, Baby Tears, this one's Canadian. <laughs> Although I do get it. This um, there's quite a few um, sister or CJ. Okay, CJ is fine. Um, that uh, are out there. Um, th these type of tools are probably more suited towards. Uh, images like this shall we say I'm guessing the sort of tool that you've got is more suited towards stamping or a cartoon style of use however there are people that use that style of tool to do things like this and they do it really well and a lot of a lot of it is just practice I can mess up quite easily with this tool so um, you know it's it it is really just about practice, um, but there uh, there is this one is if you want to look up on the internet this one that you're seeing me use here is called Razor Tip. It's actually its model number is an SSD10, but it's um, it's Razor Tip. They're made in Canada. There's a lot of, they're easily available in the states, and there are some pe places certainly in the UK. I don't know about Europe that that sell this. Firewriter is another one. There's one called. Uh, David Childs uh, makes a machine that's generally in the UK and Ireland. I'm not. I think it's available in the States. Uh, there's quite a few. If you look up pyrographic machines, and and if you see something that looks like a soldering iron, go look look elsewhere, shall we say? CJ, thank you very much for following as well. That's kind of you. Um, but it's it's really about you know. You say your tool's not great for what you're doing. Um, they're just it's just how you use it more than anything. It's just a it's just a source of heat. This this these have kind of a, an advantage. I'm a, and I'm assuming that's the type of tool that you're using. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong. Uh, but I, I suspect from the, what the way you said it is um, that's what it is. The, these are really useful because if you, um, uh, assuming you've got the sort of tool I, th I think you have, you've t if you want to change the end, you've got to turn it off. You've got to unscrew the tip, which is then red hot, and you've got to find somewhere to put that. And then you've got to screw another one, and you have to wait 30 seconds a minute for it to heat up before you can use it. And because it's it's a fixed temperature. Um, the way you've got to do things is you've got to if you want to th um, a very light line you've got to move the tool really fast 
so it doesn't heat the wood up too much um, but you you can get darker lines than I can a lot easier because you've got a lot of heat available to you in that tip you know as, as you can probably see the, this tip here is, is minute compared to probably what you've got there but for people who want to do a lot of uh, you know, wood burning where they're actually burning the wood uh, that sort of tool is absolutely fantastic it's also great for doing things like gourds um, which uh, quite a few people use that same sort of tool for but this this one kind of has the advantage if I want to change this uh, tool for another one turn that off there there we go I've now got another one plugged in and I can use this this is already hot so I'm not going to touch it and this because it's you know it's uh, it's got this rubber thing on it I, it'll just sit there on my desk without a problem I don't particularly have to worry about where to put it even though there are holders on this machine the other thing about this machine um, is I'll have a look in a second I'll just turn the camera around and show you that's the machine so it's sideways but it's just the way the tripod is um, I've got a temperature control which is effectively what that is it doesn't it well it, it's a, it's a how much current is supplied to the tool which rather than a temperature control um, exactly what six represents depends on the tool that's actually plugged in um, a tool like this one which is a writing uh, a writing tip w uh, uh, at the six I've got there this will be really hot whereas uh, this spoon shader will be medium hot and this flat shader will be slightly hotter than this one but not a lot of difference um, so there's um, you know th there are differences like that and I'm just going to go back to the tool I was originally using uh, okay so let's have a look at um, but to, I was going to say it, the these sorts of machines are probably cost more than yours did um, they're I hesitate to say they're a more specialist tool because that kind of impl implies that you know there's something not as good about yours which is not true okay they are just as good and they just have to be used in a different way so oh, let's have a look at that that's not bad blimey if you're doing that sort of thing and you say your tool's not good then you're doing what we are, most artists do that isn't bad the different woods if you use different you know different woods will give you different effects as well you might find it easier to use uh, drier woods or slightly darker woods because that the sap takes a little more time to come out of the harder woods so things like pine which is soft or birch here and the darker woods um, there's less of a contrast range with the darker woods but they you know they the fact that you've got a lot more heat available to you lets you go down towards the dark levels quite a little bit easier um, yeah and you're not actually burning the wood by the looks of that it's not doesn't look carbonized to me so that's not bad though that really does look okay and the carving uh, your carving looks better than mine <laughs> to be honest I just finished a piece the other night um, this was uh, yeah, relief carved which of course is what you're doing there and uh, so I just rearranged my screens again um, this is uh, this was done on ash. It's the first time we've done it done it on ash with hand tools. So I don't know what carving tools you're using. I'll just grab one of mine just to show you. I'm using flex tools, which you may be familiar with. So flex tools. So I'm I'm just using hand tools here. Although I do have a set of uh, rotary um, power tools that I I can use uh, an air driven tool and um, a couple of Ford and uh, rotary tools, quarter horsepower motor on for a one-eighth shaft and a micro motor if you're familiar with them 
and then just for the fun of it we try painting it because I've never painted a piece I've carved before so that was uh, you are doing some of the similar same things as I do there on the your carving is better than mine um, okay thanks very much uh, baby tears for dropping in that's great nice to uh, nice to see you and uh, welcome welcome back hope I'll see you again uh, you've only tried pine yeah uh, well, pine is kind of it's very common isn't it it's very easy to do but you've probably already found that the um, if you look at the grain the white the whiter wood between the, the rings burns a lot more easily and disappears from from the edge of the tool it, it shrinks away more than the 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 ring bit uh, which can be challenging to work with because uh, they take color differently if you uh, try getting hold of something like um, well this is birch birch plywood but uh, for practice purposes any sort of plywood will do um, obviously for for finished pieces you want reasonably good grade plywood but for um, practice pieces and any sort of plywood because it's probably it's relatively cheap uh, and it's not too bad especially if it is birch plywood because there isn't a lot of grain heavy grain in it and the the way in which the the grain and the rings take color is about the same um, but how hard, um, hardboard <laughs> works just as well uh, again you don't have the color range on it but you've got a lot of heat which will help so you know hardboard is a cheap material as well and because it's a reasonably consistent material it's quite it, it's a lot easier to work um, and I'd say hard bodies is a relatively cheap material your grandfather got into you into yeah well that's um, he, he did a good thing there shall we say <laughs> uh, stay so and I, I gather you've then therefore had um, a, a lot of practice at carving and that's you know, it's not something I don't have um, I hope you keep your huge box of chisels they're not just thrown together you know look those those are in a uh, a bag um, for you know in, in that floppy case thing for a purpose if you if you you just got chisels loose they'll bang against each other which blunts the edge blunts the cut blunts the cutting surface so what you um, what you can get relatively cheap cheaply is just tool rolls which I kind of recommend you keep your chisels in or cap them at least uh, if you can that would um, would greatly assist in keeping them sharp but you're a sculptor okay I'm not I, yeah <laughs> thank you about the bomber a sculptor I I I like the idea of, of sculpting but um, and it's kind of a, a sort of I'm sort of playing with with 3d carving sculpting you know carving sculptures if you see what I mean rather than sculpting clay type sculpting um, yeah so I don't know 3d object uh, that's that this was done with a rotary tool by the way first time I'd ever used one so it's it's really rough sculpture wise it's smooth wood but it's really rough in terms of sculptures I, I this was just pulled out of an old uh, uh, a, it, it's a, a bit of firewood basically which was uh, I just I just picked it up so it had been you know a log a split log and I just picked it up and thought for some reason I could see a fish in it so that was the first time I actually used a, a rotary uh, the big rotary tool um, but um, that sort of sculpting fascinates me clay type sculpting etc um, also fascinates me but I don't like the mess <laughs> um, okay you keep them oiled in a fishing box yeah oh well, great no well done well done um, so somebody yeah you know, I kept saying it on the stream you know look after 
chisels because um, that that way you know it's a cliche they look after you, but a sharp chisel is your friend. A blunt chisel is your enemy, as you probably know. You know they've got to keep them uh, keep them sharp. But yeah, so sculpting sort of interests me. Um, I'm kind of. Um, I'd love to sort of uh, do 3D sculpting on the PC, but finding finding an application, I mean ZBrush would be great to use, but it's expensive. Sculptress, which is a cheap, is a free version, seems okay. I'm kind of into 3D printing, so I'd love to do th uh, sculpting, electronic sculpting, and then turn it into an image, uh, you know, a, a, a print. Let's have a look at that image you just uh, linked there. Wow! Are you doing that on stream, CJ? I've seen. I think I've seen that on stream. Are you? Are you? Do you stream that? Um, that's great. <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I do have do not have that level of skill, but I am guessing you've done this for a long time. Um, oil clay, okay. You might have gathered. Well, you may not have gathered, but I'm kind of generally creative. I don't have a specialism. I'm doing pyrography. I was carving. Um, I I airbrush. I um, make rugs. I'll do cross stitch. I um, engrave glass. I do stuff on the computer. I'm kind of all over the place. It sort of says, you know, I have a uh, I have a low attention span for doing one thing more than once. I, I I'm sort of not very good at lots of things and. Actually, streaming is getting me to practice things a lot more. I mean, I've done more of that, as as you probably heard me say to Baby Tears. I've done more of that in about the past three weeks than I've done in the last six months before I started streaming. But oil clay, there's a guy, there's a guy I've seen doing some sort of wax type clay, which has come out of America. I don't know if it's where you are or if it's generally available, but that is that's interesting because my wife makes or loves candles. Now I know it's not the same thing, but you know, wax is not something is something I'm familiar with. Um, actually, I ought to try carving wax. Anyway, um, so yeah, but that that kind of looked messy. Looked messy on stream. If I uh, might have to have a watch of you doing that. I've seen it a couple of times, but I've always sort of just been going to bed. If if it is indeed you, yeah, on stream, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that one. It's the character and the the support for it was what uh, triggered that in my memory. And I can see some pieces in the back there. The fish, is it? Looks a bit like a I'd, I'd have said a pike's mouth, but I don't know. And then the head. Um. But oil clay. Um. Okay. I might have to uh, take a look. Just uh, I I love trying things out. I've ordered a kit of uh, well, most people know as perla beads, but these aren't. They're not that manufacturer. I've ordered a kit of those to try. I'm I am fascinated by pixel-based art forms, hence cross stitching or rug making. Um, you've only been sculpting for four months. Uh, you're doing that after four months. D yeah, right. <laughs> I don't quite know what to say about that. Um, some people have the talent, and then there's me that doesn't. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to do that after four months. Um, I've been drawing, drawing for about a year, and I probably couldn't draw that as well as you've sculpted it. I could draw it, but not maybe not as well as you've sculpted it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the wax clay. Yeah, Joxol, yes, that's correct, I think. Oh, it's a fish, a snakehead fish skull. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, hmm. Be, be careful you don't well I was about to say be careful you don't get bored with doing it because you're doing it for so long but I kind of suspect that it didn't really feel like that um, and that I that's that's my personal thing I think if I went at something like that f you know four months 18 hours a day after four months I'd be wanting to do something different rather than uh, that but you, you know obviously different people are different things uh, and I, you know, I'm talking away and not doing out here, but uh, I can spend all day doing this and, you know, literally I can start nine o'clock in the morning, I can pick up this, something like this, and I, I can look up and go, oh, I need to put a light on, it's got dark, and it's sort of eight o'clock at night, and the time's just gone, so I maybe that's that's the same that you know, you, you experience there with your 18 hour days. It's it's very easy to just keep going or just do a little bit more and things like that. But well done. That stuff is um, utterly amazing. I shall have to. Uh, uh, I shall have to drop in on one of your one of your streams. I've seen it a few times, but I've, as I say, I've always been sort of going to bed or going out or doing something like that, I've never really had a chance to stop in. Yeah. And that's probably why you're so good at it, because you, you, you like the subject matter, really. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of I, I kind of like the variety myself. <laughs> But as for what I like doing, um, I don't. Know, anatomy isn't anatomy per se isn't something that interests me. The shapes do. Okay, I'll let you go and get on with your stream then. Don't want to uh, stop anybody streaming. The more people that do, I'll try and drop in later on. Uh, there's a couple of people I want to check out though. There's. Um, uh, there's there's a uh, a guy that's doing doing the beading uh, work that I mentioned that I want to take a look at. Um, he he bubbles the monkey. He's uh, he's streaming uh, bead bead um, bead art. So I want to drop in at him. But I'll uh, I'll try and drop in your stream. I'm due to finish shortly anyway. So yeah. Okay, I shall. I shall have a look around. It, you know, since um, I only discovered Creative about a month ago now, and I don't watch anything else these days on on Twitch or virtually anything else. Full stop. But uh, good luck with your stream. Thank you. Uh, thank you for dropping in and and saying hello and showing that fantastic artwork. I certainly uh, appreciate the effort and the skill that goes into into making it. <laughs> oh, I don't stalk everybody. Um, I like the physical stuff more. Uh, hmm. I watch some some gaming streamers. Not very many, to be honest. There's, there's generally uh, I watch Minecraft. So uh, the Forgecraft crew, basically, I'll watch, and uh, I sometimes will watch Dan's gaming, but that's that's oh and Squirrel, um, but that's about all I watch gamer-wise, and uh, in terms of uh, creative, it it will be I'll, I'll have more of a tendency to watch the the physical artists like yourself sculpting or or somebody doing uh, chain mail or something like that yeah oh, I, don't, I mean I, I, since I do draw on the computer I think uh, Artillery 62 is one guy I've always watched it uh, or JB Drawing is his other uh, name I think it's his commercial name and he quite often streams either in creative or on um, within Minecraft itself, but um, 
I, I find I, I find because I'm interested in in the digital art as well you know he's actually a silent streamer which I normally don't watch but I guess it's just his style of drawing which I like but yeah usually the physical ones you know as you said the the guy with the uh, the wax clay is one I watch um, watched a couple of people doing beads this 3d bloke who is uh, airbushing um, there's somebody sculpting at the dragon just recently and CJ thank oh blimey thank you very much thank you for that that's fantastic that's amazing thank you very much for that I don't quite know what to say I would I would say thank you very much especially because you are the very first person to do that thank you um, I'm kind of gobsmacked <laughs> Ah oh dear. Um, I am gonna I'm gonna leave that now up on, on my on, on my on my stream uh for at least a few days. Um yeah, so so you can be famous CJ. Thank you very much. That's absolutely I I am I I'm gobsmacked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, you can tell you've thrown me, haven't you? Really, there. And now I've put the facility up for people to do it, and and it it says kind of like you know, wood doesn't go on trees, and and you know it it doesn't, and it's relatively pricey. But I never expected anybody to actually do that. Thank you. Again, thank you. Oh. Uh, I shall. Um, I've got some really nice uh, poplar plywood here, so I shall. Um, I shall cons. Because uh, my I, my wife paid for that, so I shall consider the. Um, I shall consider that you've bought me some really nice uh, poplar plywood, and I'll uh, refund to my wife for that. So thank you. And uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to use it for a couple of weeks. Uh, I don't think, but because this is going to take me about a week to do, especially if I spend uh, all day just talking to people rather than actually, uh, you know, putting pen to pen to wood. But thank you. Um, I've got to come and watch it now, then, don't I? <laughs> don't let me keep you from your stream, though. By you know, um, keep you talking. You know, share. Share the skill out, and um, yeah, if you if do you ever do if you I can always come and ask in your stream, but do you ever do you, do you, you doing any of the carving on stream or any of the pyrography? Because that would be uh, nice to see. There ain't too many people doing pyrography. Uh, there's only three that I know of. You're the you'll be the fourth if you did it. So I'd love to see uh, some other people doing it. As I say, the physical, the physical arts. So I guess you probably want to finish the piece you're working on. You're know, not necessarily dot about, but yeah. <laughs> I can't concentrate on what I'm doing now. Ah oh dear. No, I I know you didn't mean it in that way, but you know, it's um. I kind of consider it polite, at least, <laughs> for me to come and see, to, to actually see you and spend some time in the stream rather than just dropping in. Uh, oh, okay. Well, say so I've I've not you know, I've not been around creative very long. It, it, I've only just relatively speaking discovered it. So, um, you know, it's uh, and there are some really good streamers uh, on. And I just haven't had, had time to really look at everybody, but I uh, I, I keep trying to make the time, and I, I I'm I'm lucky in that I can spend time. Quite often I can run a stream while I'm at work, which is UK time. So um, unfortunately, there isn't as many people streaming 
uh, in creative during the UK day but um, it tends to be it tends to uh, tends to be my entertainment these days more than more than well I don't watch television at all and I very very rarely listen to music these days I'm getting caught here there's there's one thing uh, about this tool because the I'm using the edge of it I'm getting caught in the grain and I've got to be careful of that because I'm trying to create a curve here uh, so that I I follow the, the facial contours uh, as you know it, uh, it I'll lose the um I'll lose the 3D effect if I'm not careful and don't follow the follow the facial contours that's one thing that uh, pine makes quite difficult. Pine tends to keep you in in between the wood grain. Yes, I will do. I'm I'm about to uh, give up. As you probably realise, wood burning makes you warm, so I'm going that way at the moment. So good luck for your stream, sir. Thank you again. Thank you very much for the donation. That's most kind of you. And uh, I will uh, I will drop in um, after after I finish my stream. So if there's anybody who's watching, um, you know. I highly recommend you, you, you know, having seen the artwork that uh, CJ there has, and I've seen his, you know, caught his stream a couple of times. I highly recommend that you um, at, at least drop in on the stream and, and have a watch of what he's doing, if not, to actually follow him. Um, you know, you can do that now if you don't know. Click on his name in my uh, chat window. That you should get the option to uh, to go to his channel and or follow him. So I highly recommend that you do that. And I'm not just saying that because you're the thing. I'm saying it because you're good. See you soon. Yep, cheers and thank you very much for dropping by. So if there's anybody, uh, there is anybody in stream, and uh, I've been having a general chat there with quite a few people, and you're welcome to join in or uh, you know say hello and raise a an interesting topic to discuss. Um, but if you're wondering what you're actually seeing, if you're looking at this and wondering what I'm doing or what uh, CJ and I were talking about in respect to uh, tools and things. What uh, what you're looking at is is pyrography, a Latin stroke Greek derived you know, ancient Latin or Greek derived words. I'm never that sure about it, but um, uh, a literal translation is uh, fire writing. Pyro being fire, graphy referring to writing, but generally speaking, it it generally more translates as uh, creating images with heat. Fire is not really often involved, and whilst we do, and lots of people do include writing in their piece, you know, it's it's just a different form of art. Writing is a form of art or a, set, a form of image. I generally don't do a great deal unless I'm titling something, or as um, I do sometimes, um, or if I'm doing a piece which has maybe got text on it, like a poem, for example, like a one piece I have done is a memorial piece for a cat with uh, a verse by the side of it. I seem to be doing a lot of cats, but that's coincidental. Um, so, yeah, there are people that do use fire, um, generally something like a blowtorch, and then they're working on really large pieces, but um, they're excellent artists. You can find them on uh, on YouTube if you look for pyrography. Um, so I'm using um, a somewhat more controlled tool here. It, uh, it's heating the wood using electricity as opposed to gas. 
should I fill that in there and there? Sorry, I'm just studying my image and working it. Yes, I should. Um, this is an electrically powered tool, plugs into the mains. It's um, a safe, it's operating at a safe voltage. With one and a half to three volts uh, is here, which is safe to touch. I'm not touching it because it's hot, <laughs> basically. But if I unplug it, just to show you, the electricity is there. I don't have any problem with touching both contacts. These are warm. In fact, they're quite hot. And I'm going to have to let go shortly, but I'm not getting electric shock or anything. They're warm, actually, because they are not making as good a contact as they might. And that creates resistance. And it's the resistance where the heat comes from. And it should be down here. I'm losing heat because I'm, uh, some resistance is being created here, which is making it hot. So I shall have to look at that and adjust those contacts a little bit later. Um, I really don't want the plugs being any warm at all. Um, because I want the electricity to be down here at the tip. But they're, they're a safe voltage, but this thing is probably easily approaching a couple of hundred degrees Celsius. Uh, so I don't want to be touching it, but um, other than that, it is, it, is, it is safe even though we are plugged into the mains. What I'm actually, what's actually happening here is whilst pyrography all often gets called wood burning, generally speaking the way that I'm doing it here I'm not burning the wood. What I am doing is the heat is effectively cooking the sap in the wood fibers. It, it is actually almost drawing it out and I am whilst I'm doing this I effectively can see a liquid or oh, it's acting like a liquid um, which which is the sap itself and if I hold the heat in one place the sap gets cooked more and it goes darker. If you're familiar with maple syrup people who tap a tree get the sap out of it and then heat that sap to create maple syrup um, as you create it it goes a golden darker brown and that's exactly what's happening here. I'm not suggesting you drink or eat this sap but it's a similar sort of process. and uh, you you the wood burning generally I I describe it as carbonizing the wood because again we don't actually burn it there's no flame involved uh, what we actually do is heat it enough so that the wood carbonizes it's um would be very much similar to the way that charcoal's made where the wood is heated uh, to such a such a point that you drive um, a lot of the uh, I don't know quite what you drive out of the wood, but effectively the wood oxidizes, uh, and you get you get the charcoal, which is which is the black stuff. So we're not exactly burning the wood either, but the uh, that's about as dark as you get. Um, I don't really want to get that dark. I find if I try, or if I start carbonizing wood. I have problems with it in that it's it's difficult to control. The carbonizing goes quite deep, so it's if I need to try and erase it, I can't because it's so deep without really cutting into the wood, because there are erasing techniques. Uh, and if I start really cutting into the wood, it dis destroys the surface, which makes it difficult to create a good image afterwards. Uh, and as I as, as you carbonize the wood it, it shrinks away it shrinks quite a lot uh, and you get a really textured surface which might not be something that I want so carbonizing is not something I, I generally do can can be used quite effectively um, you can you can use wood burning tools that that work like stamps where you are a brand is perhaps a better description of it where you hold it down until the wood carbonizes and you get the image of whatever's on the end of the tool yeah they 
different different art form works in the almost exactly the same way but he's generally just carbonizing the wood but I uh, I prefer this style I like creating images uh, rather than stamping and therefore I'm using a tool where I've got more con I've got more control over it and I it, I'm, I can turn the heat up or I can turn the heat down which if I combine that with the speed of movement uh, allows me quite a lot of variation in in color and generally speaking I'm aiming to start with colors that are quite light and as the image develops I'll make the colors darker so I'll go over a piece like um, I'll go over say here which is lighter than I want it to be and, and it will get darker each time I cook the the um, the sap I cook the, the, the cell contents a little bit more and they go darker and that way then I can control just how just the shades that I actually want and I can to some extent use that methodology to correct mistakes that I may have made and generally the mistakes are something's darker than I want it to be so when I'm when you're doing pyrography in this style a lot of it is all about contrast and the um, the relative shades to each other so for example you you're seeing the eyes as black on stream now look they look jet black to you they look dark brown to me here and if I if I isolate the if I were to isolate the eyes you'd probably see them as dark brown but because there's a, a lighter area around and this area here your eyes or your brain is comparing this color and this color and this color together and saying well that must be black uh, and daft as it sounds a little white spot that's in the middle which you're seeing as bright white which is actually the wood color um, helps make it look black um, so it's all it's all about relative color uh, relative shade to relative color you your brain actually gets fooled and um, one of the artists I've mentioned on on stream who, who streams on Twitch 3D Block he is a an airbrush artist he's been doing some monochrome work he recently uh, completed a piece of Darth Vader's helmet which is black he did it on a black canvas and he used white paint but if you actually look at that the white paint looks black can't really put it any other way it's real daft there's only white well there's black paint being used as well but there's only white paint effectively being used and yet when you look at that piece you don't see white paint you see everything as black it's a black mask on a black background and your eyes fooled now it's not quite the same here but you know the the relative uh, shades are important because that uh, gives hints to you as to how to see something like you see the eyes as really dark black it's very likely that you're seeing the the iris around the outside here as, as a greeny yellow color possibly a very light yellow um, partly hinted at because uh, you know it, it's a it's actually a very light brown but you you, you a lot of, lot of people will see it as slightly slightly green and again that's just because of the um, the shading but if I make this darker still then the eyes will appear to change color they'll appear to look whiter and that is because you, you're um, judging this shade to this shade to this shade um, so it's if I can control shades then I can I can control that effect to some extent and you'll see things slightly differently but anyway it's quite a complex subject and I don't by any means pretend to be doing necessarily doing it on purpose I am looking at this piece and going you know what I actually want this bit to be a bit darker 
and I just make it a bit darker I'm not going um well if I want this to look like X I must do Y to this I'm not that clever I understand why it's happening but I'm not that clever okay well I've done what I uh, well I haven't done as much as I intended to do because I've spent uh, an enjoyable evening talking to uh, various people in chat and uh, it, it's it's been really really good fun this evening I've done a fair sizable amount here um, it, it's about the time I normally stop streaming so um, I think I'm going to do that it's it's quite warm here and I would I'm going to enjoy having a nice glass of cold water which I've got to one side here and I'm going to go have a look at uh, CJ um, who is doing some lovely sculpting work who was on the stream earlier and I'm also going to look at Bubbles the Monkey who's doing some work with some beads which is also an art form that interests me and uh, see how that goes so here comes the advert the usual one um, if you are interested in uh, in, in what you've seen here in the chat um, yeah, by all means and I would encourage you of course um, to click the follow button and then hopefully Twitch will tell you when I go live um, next time I may do a special stream tomorrow afternoon but it will be on a different uh, a different art form but otherwise tomorrow evening uh, 8 p.m. UK time which is approximately two and a quarter hours ago so wherever you are, two and a quarter hours previous to this is about when I start. Give or take 15 minutes either way generally. Um, if you don't trust Twitch to tell you and you use Twitter, then if you care to follow me on Twitter, uh, a message does go out on Twitter when I go live. And if you look at my Twitter feed, you'll notice that I don't tweet very much at all. So you're not going to get inundated. Um, I essentially only ever say when I go live so feel free to follow me on uh, on Twitter and otherwise I'd like to say thank you for watching and uh, have a good evening and uh, see you tomorrow bye bye everybody